La Brie Tibisio. La Brie Marie. In Paul's letter to the Roman Church, he says in chapter 13, verse 1, everyone must submit to government authorities, for all authority comes from God, and those in position of authority have been placed there by God. Un Pāvils raksta Romiešiem 13.1. Ik viens lai paklausīgs varām, kas valda, jo nav valsts varas, kā vien no Dievu, un tās, kas ir, ir Dievu iecelts. And believe it or not, this verse is going to tie in into our message today. If you turn into your Bibles to Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. Un tad šī ir apskriet būs saistībā ar mūsu šīs dienas spēdiķi, un atversim Marka evangēlī 12. nodaļu. We're continuing our journey through the Gospel of Mark. We are now in chapter 12. And we will be looking at verses 13 to 17. Four verses, but there's a lot in there. Now, chapter 12 continues the confrontation between the religious leaders and Jesus. Un šeit turpinās strīdi starp uh, rakstu mācītājiem un Jēzu. In fact, this confrontation began at the very end of chapter 11. Un uh, šie strīdi sākas uh, vienstās nodaļas beigās. This is when they came to Jesus and demanded, by what authority do you do your ministry? Un uh, tad viņi nāca pie Jēzus un, uh, un jautāja, uh, kādā, ar kādu spēku un ar kādu autoritāti tu dari šo kalpošanu. But Jesus turns it around and asks them about John's ministry. Did it come from God or was it man-made? Bet Jēzus to apvērš pretēji un prasa par Jāņu kalpošanu, lai tā nāca no cilvēku vai no Dievu. Well, they found themselves stuck because they didn't want to answer it was from God. Un uh, viņi bija tā kā iespruduši savā atbildē, jo viņi negribēja atbildēt, ka tā bija no Dieva. Because if they did, then Jesus would say, well, well then why didn't you believe his message? Jo, ja viņi tā pateiktu, tad ja es varētu teikt, kāpēc tad jūs neticējāt viņu vārdiem. If they said, no, it wasn't from God. Bet ja viņi teiktu, nē, tas nebija no Dieva. Then the crowd that was surrounding them would pick up stones and kill the religious leaders because they believed John was sent by God. Uh, ja teiktu, ka nebija no Dieva, tad Pūlis apmētātu rakstmācītājs ar akmeņiem, jo Pūlis ticēja, kad, uh, ka Jānis bija Dieva sūtīts. So they came up with the answer they thought was the best. We don't know. Un viņi izvēlēs labāko atbildi, mēs nezinām. And thus Jesus didn't answer their question. Un vai Jēzus atbildēja uz viņu jautājumu? But then going right into chapter 12. Un kad mēs klasām 12. nodaļu is a continuation when Jesus begins to tell the story about a landowner uh, who plants a vineyard and hires workers to take care of the vineyard. And when harvest times come, the landowner sent servants to collect part of the fruit. But the workers mistreated the servants, actually killing some of them. Finally, the landowner said, I'll send my son. Surely they'll respect and listen to him. The worker saw the son, says, let's kill him, because then if we kill him, this whole property will become ours. So in the story, they killed the son, threw him out of the vineyard. And Jesus said, so what should the landowner do now? Un ja es teicu, ko tad tagad uh, zemes īpašniekam vajadzētu darīt? He will come and kill the workers. Viņš nāks un nogalinās strādniekus. And give the land to another nation. Un iedos to zemi citai nācijai. In many ways, he answered the question by whose authority was given to him. Un dažādos veidos viņš atbildēja šo jautājumu, kas viņam bija devs autoritāti. Because the religious leaders realized the landowner is God, Jo rakstmācītāji saprata, ka zemes īpašnieks bija Dievs. The vineyard is Israel. 
The workers were the leaders of Israel, including them, the religious leaders. The servants were the prophets sent by God, which some were hit and hurt and some were killed. And they knew that Jesus represented the son of the landowner. And if you think about it, Jesus was letting them know, I know you're going to kill me. Because in that story, he predicted his own death. So now we're in verse 13 of Mark 12. And it says, later the religious leaders sent some Pharisees and supporter of Herod to trap Jesus into saying something for which he could be arrested. But I like what Luke says concerning the same account. But Luke, par šo pašu lietu teica. Luke says, so they watched him, that's the religious leaders, and sent spies who pretended to be righteous, that they might seize on his words in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the governor. Lūkas 20.20 ir teica, tie, tad tie glūnēja uz viņu un sūtīja izlūkus kam vajadzēja izlikties nevainīgiem, lai tie viņi pieķertu kādā vārdā. Un to varētu nodot valdībai un zemes soļa varai. Again, this is still the confrontation between the leaders. Now they're sending other people to see if they can trap Jesus. Un atkal notiek tas strīdz starp Jēzu un rakstu mācītēm, tad viņi sūta citus cilvēkus, lai pieķertu Jēzu. And I like how Luke says it, they watched him. Un uh, man patīk, kā Luke Surely by now the religious leaders in Jerusalem know who Jesus is. They've heard about him. And now they've seen him in action in the temple. And they're watching him with critical eyes. Do you keep in mind that the world is watching you and I? The world, pass away. You know, when we claim we're Christians, non-believers begin to watch every step we make. Because they have their idea what a Christian is supposed to be like. And they watch how we talk. They watch how we react to situations. They're watching to see if we really are Christ-like. That's what the word Christian means. There is something I was told many years ago that I hold on today. Non-believers may never open the Bible or read it. But when they hear that you are a Christian, they will read your life. So what pages are we showing the people? So they're watching Jesus to see how can they trap him. But I like how, again, how Luke says they sent spies who pretended to be righteous. Well, Mark says these who pretend to be righteous were the Pharisees. And we've been introduced to the Pharisees throughout the Gospel of Mark. In fact, the Pharisees 
they were very traditional and they pretty much had their traditions equal to God's word. Farzēbi ir ļoti tradicionāli un viņa viņu tradīcijas lielā mērā saskan saskanēja Dieva vārdu. They were self-righteous and very smug. Viņi bija tādi pašstaisni. And they thought if we do all these rituals and rules were holy. Un viņi domāja, ja mēs tur turēsim visus šos rituālus un likumus, tad mēs esam svēti. Do you know anyone like that in real life? Vai jūs zināt kādu cilvēku tādu, nu, dzīvē? Who think well they keep all these rules, they dress a certain way, they talk a certain way that they're holy. Kad viņi domā, ka viņi vēl palkās konkrētas drēbes un un konkrētā veidā uzvedīsies un tad viņi domās ka viņi ir svēti. And they look holy. Un viņi izskatās svēti. On the outside. No ārpuses. But in the heart they're unholy and evil. Bet sirdīs viņi ir ne svēti un ļauni. And even Jesus called them to hypocrites. Un uh, Jēzus viņus nosauca par liekuņiem. And the word hypocrite means actor. Un tā vārds liekus nozīmē aktieris. They were acting the part like they were holy when they weren't. Un uh, viņi tā kā tēloja, ka viņi ir svēti, bet viņi nebija patiesībā. You know, it's sad when, when people begin to hold traditions at the same level as God's word. Un ir skumīgi, ka cilvēki nostāda tradīcijas vienā līmenī ar Dievu vārdu. This should be our final authority in our faith. Šim ir jābūt mūsu uh, you know, even the Christian church at times have put tradition at the same level as God's word. And traditions get passed century to century to where we kind of like do it because it's always been done. Un tradīcijas turpinās no vienu gadsimtu uz otru, un mēs turpinām tās piekopi, jo tā vienmēr visi ir dejījuši. And that's what led Martin Luther to do the Reformation. Un tas noved Martinu Luteru pie tā, lai sāktos kādas reformācijas. Because at that time the Church of Rome had all these traditions of things to do and not do. Jo tanī laikā uh, Romā draudzē bija visas tās tradīcijas par lietām, ko darīt, ko nedarīt. And Martin Luther looked in the Bible and found out that we live by faith alone, not by works. Un Martins Luters ieraudzīja, ka Bīvilē ir rakstīts, ka mēs dzīvojam no ticības, nevis uh, netiekam taisnoti dēļ darbiem. And his goal was to turn the church back to the word of God. Un viņa mērķis bija atgriezt draudzi atpakaļ pie Dievu vārda. Because the traditions were the traditions of men. Jo tradīcijas bija cilvēku iedvinātas. And the Pharisees pretty much followed the traditions of the elders and of men. Un parizēji sekoja vecaju tradīcijām un cilvēku iedvinātājiem tradīcijām. Now, they teamed up with a group called the Herodians, or supporter of Herod. Un tad viņi nodibināja tādu grupu, kas saucās Herodiešu vai Heroda atbalstītāji. Understand, these two groups hated each other. Un šīs abas grupas viena otru ienīda. The Pharisees represented the religious life of Judaism. Parizēji atainoja reliģisko jūdaismu dzīvi. And the supporters of Herod represented the Roman government. They supported Herod. They loved Rome. Un tie Herodieši atbalstīja romiešu valdību. Viņi mīlēja Romu. So here you had a group that were patriotic and nationalist and a group that was for the government that controlled your country. Un te ir viena grupa, kas ir nacionālisti un patrioti, un otra grupa, kas uh, valda pārvalda par valsti. But their hatred for Jesus was much greater that somehow they were able to form an alliance together. Bet viņu, uh, tā, tas naids pret Jēzu bija tik spēcīgs, ka viņas apvienojās kopā pret Jēzu. You know, if you think about it, it's amazing how Jesus brings people together. Dažreiz liekas, kad ir apbrīnojami, kā Jēzus savieno cilvēkus kopā. In their case, two bitter enemies that were brought together that wanted to get rid of Jesus. Un šajā gadījumā bija divi, tā kā ienaidnieki savienot kopā, kuri vēlējās tikt vaļā no Jēzus. But think about it, in this room, because of Jesus, we've been brought together. Un arī šajā te telpā, dēļ Kristus, mēs esam savesti kopā. I mean, let's think about it. If it wasn't for Jesus, would we be in this room? 
Ja nebūt Jēzus, vai mēs būtu kopā šeit šajā telpā? No, we, we come from different backgrounds, different cultures, different countries. Mēs nebūtu, jo mēs nākam no, dažāda, no dažādām vietām, no dažādām valstīm. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we wouldn't even talk to each other most likely. Ja nebūtu Jēzus Kristus, iespējams, mēs viens ar otru pat nesazinātos, nesarunātos. But because of our faith in Jesus Christ and because we are blood brothers and sisters through the blood of Jesus Christ, jo mēs esam brāļi un māsi Jēzus Kristu caur viņu asinību. Here we are. Un dēļ tā šeit mēs esam. All with different backgrounds. Daž no dažādiem, no dažādas pagātnes and cultures. It's amazing how Jesus bring people together. So, here are the Pharisees and the supporters of Herod. I kind of pictured them like wolves looking at Jesus like we've got him now. I mean, they had to really think this question out. Un tagad, nu, kā tad tiks atbildēt šis jautājums? So they started in verse 14. Un tad viņi sāk 14. pantā. Teacher, they said. <laughs> we know you're an honest person. You're impartial. And you don't play favorites. Oh, no, no, no. You teach the way of God truthfully. Now, um, tell us. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? I mean, should we pay them or shouldn't we? Jesus saw through their hypocrisy and said, Why are you trying to trap me? Show me a Roman coin and I'll tell you. Can you do it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Mācītāji, mēs zinām, ka tu esi patiesīgs un negrib iztapt nevienam, jo tu neuzlauko cilvēku vaigu. Bet māc patiesi Dievu ceļ. Vai ir atļauts dot ķeizaram nodevs vai nē? Vai lai dodam vai nedodam? Bet viņu viltību pazīdams viņš tiem sacīja. Kam jūs mani kārdināt? Atnesat man denāri, lai es to redzu. Jā, yep, Luke was right when he said pretending to be righteous. Jā, un uh, Lūks, Lūkam bija patiesība, ka viņš teica, uh, nu, tā kā iztēloties, ka tu esi taisnīgs. Have you ever had anyone try to flatter you? Vai tu esi kādreiz uh, piedzīvojis, ka kāds tevi mēģina, nu, tā kā glaimot? You know, something like, oh, your hairstyle looks so wonderful, it's terrible. Un kāds tev saka, tev tik brīnšķīgi frizūs šodien, bet patiesībā tā ir briesmīga. You look so good in that dress. It's hideous. Tu tik labi izskaties šajā kleitā, bet patiesībā tā nekam nedar. Here are the religious leaders trying to flatter Jesus. Un šeit tie rakstu mācītāji centās glaimot Jēzu. I mean, in their mind, he's just a country boy from Galilee. Jo viņi prātā, tas vienkārši bija lauku zēns no Galilējas. So if we say all these nice things, who might open up? Un, uh, ja mēs, uh, nu, tā kā teiksim, viss šīs jaukās lietas, tad varbūt viņš atvērsies. Nu, Now, what's amazing about the flattery of the Pharisees? Un kas ir aprīnojams šajā tā glaimošanā? You know, they're saying, oh, we know you're a good guy, you teach the way of God. Nu, ka viņi saka, tu esi tas, tāds labs uh, cilvēks, tu māc Dievu vārdu. Do you remember a few chapters earlier they called him a demon? <laughs> ja jūs atcerēs, ka dažas nodaļas. Agrāk viņš viņus nosauc par uh, dēmoniem. They said that he was evil. Kad viņi teica, ka viņš ir ļauns. And he was a threat. Un, uh, a threat. Un ka viņš bija viņiem draudz. And now he's like, but we know you teach the way of God. Un tagad viņi tika pārēršās un saka, mēs zinām, ka tu māci Dievu ceļus. If you want to see hypocrisy, there it was. Un ja gribat zināt liekuļu piemēru, tad lūk šeit ir. Two face Pharisees. Divu seju. You know, flattery still happens to this day. <laughs> In fact, they always say, watch out when someone gives you a compliment. <laughs> Because it may be real, it may be just flattery. <laughs> Now it's true, Jesus did teach the way of God truthfully. Bet uh, Jēzus mācīja Dievu vārdu patiesībā. Because he is the way, the truth and the life. Jo viņš ir uh, ceļš patiesību un dzīvību. 
And the thing that that is true about Jesus is he doesn't play favorites. Un Jēzus nebija tādi mīrākiem cilvēki. In fact, God doesn't have favorites. Dievam nav tādi mīlulīši. God treats everyone the same. Dievs pret visiem izturās vienādi. Now true, he relates to us individually. Protams, ka viņš pret katru no mums attiecas kaut kā savādāk. But in his eyes, no one's better than the other. Bet viņa acīs nav tā, ka viens labāks nekā otrs. And I think it's sad when sometimes nationalities or countries think they're better because I got this color skin or I got this color eyes. Un ir skumīgi, ka kādreiz valsts vai tautības domā par sevi, ka nu, mēs esam labāk, jo mums, teiksim, ir smukā kādas krāsa vai acu krāsa. God is not a prejudiced God. Uh, prejudiced. They get uh, racist. Uh, Dievs nav rasists. Because, first of all, God made all the races. Jo, pirmkārt, Dievs visus rases ir radījis. And the word of God says in Revelation that every every tribe, nationality and language will gather together before God. Un um, pēdējā Bīblijas grāmatā ir teikts, ka visas ciltis, tautas, valodas, viss nāks kopā, lai uh, pielūk to kungu. I mean, can you imagine being in heaven? Vai jūs varat iedomāties, ka jūs esat debesīs? And you're surrounded by all these different nationalities. Un tur jūs apkārt ir citu tautību cilvēki. You know, when we host conferences at Gregor's, we have people from different nationalities, nationalities come. Now, I don't understand half the things they say. <laughs> and it's very intriguing to hear the different languages. Because they all sound different. Some sounds romantic like French. Some sounds very musical like Latvian. Some sound like they're always angry like German or Russian. <laughs> But it's neat to see you know, how they all sound. Bet uh, interesanti ir klausīties tā to, kā izklausās valoda. I have friends who are in Pakistan, in India. Man ir draugi Pakistānā, Indijā. Different culture than here in Latvia. Ļoti atšķirīgi kultūra no latviešu kultūras. Even my own kids are different culture. Pat mani bērni ir no dažādām kultūrām. Kristaps un Līga are half Latvian, half Ukrainian, part German. Mm, Kristaps un Līga ir pa pusēji latviešu, pa pusēji ukraini un pa pusēji You know, definitely laughing in heart. But then I got my youngest son, who's Roma. Very different culture altogether. And it's fun to go from one house to the other and literally be in different cultures. We as believers need to embrace the other cultures as well. Mums kā kristiešiem vajag cienīt citas kultūras. Because especially those who are the household of faith. It īpaši, ja tie ir ticības brāļi vai māsas. Because they are our brothers and sisters. Jo viņi ir mūsu brāļi un māsas. You know, I have another son that I support in Africa. Man ir kāds vēl viens, tā kā dēls, kur es atbalstu, viņš ir no Afrikas. His name is Yufasa. Viņa saucas Yufasa. And his culture is way different than the Indian culture and Pakistan culture. In fact, uh, this past week he took pictures of the dinner he made. Now, my first thought was, is that a rat you're eating? <laughs> Because he showed a picture of him catching it, skinning it, and cooking it, and I was like, You eat that? You know. But the common thing, well, it tastes like chicken, you know. But, you know, if he was to come here, he goes, you eat potatoes? <laughs> so, it's just interesting how God has made all these wonderful cultures and nationalities. Un ir interesanti, kā Dievs ir izveidojis visu šīs dažādās kultūras un nācijas. He doesn't play favorites. Un viņam nav mīļākā nācija un mīļākā kultūra. So now, 
they come with this very tricky tax question. Un tagad ir tāds tāds izaisnos jautājums par nodokļiem. Do we pay or don't we? Ir jāmaksā valdībai nodokļi vai nav jāmaksā? And I can see them like drooling with saliva right now like we've got them now. Un man liekas, ka nu viņi tā diskutijas, kad, nu tagad ar šo jautājumu tiešām mēs pietirsim viņu. Because if he says yes, jo, ja viņš pateiks jā, then the Pharisees would say, see, he's for Rome, he's against our country, he's awful, let's leave him, he's not for us, he's not a true Israelite. Ja viņš teikt, jā, ka ir jāmaksā, tad farizēji teikt, tu redziet, viņš ir saistīts ar romiešiem, viņš tā kā ienīst izraeliešus, viņš ir Romas pusē. It would definitely make him unpopular with the Jewish people and they would stop following him. Un viņš vairs tad nebūtu populārs jūdu cilvēku vidū un viņi vairs nesakot viņam. If he was to say no, bet viņš pateikt, ka nē, then the supporters of Herod would jump in. Tad, uh, tad paceltos tie Herodieši. He's an enemy of Rome. He says we shouldn't be paying taxes. We need to arrest him right now. Un viņi varētu teikt, ka viņš ir tagad Romas ienaidnieks. Viņš teica, ka nevajag maksāt Romai nodokļus. Mums viņu vajag arestēt. So if he says yes, we got him. Ja viņš pateiks jā, tad mēs viņu esam pieķēruši. If he says no, we got him. Un ja viņš pateiks nē, mēs arī viņu esam pieķēruši. Because Jesus was a threat to both the religious people and the political people. Jo Jēzus bija draudz abām grupām, gan religiskiem līderiem, rakstmācītājiem, gan tiem politiskajiem. Remember, the supporters of Herod heard the people in chapter 11 cry out Hosanna to the king. Un tie Herodieši, Herod atbalstītāji, viņi uh, nu, ka pirms tā, kad Jēzus ieļā Jeruzālumē, viņi sauc savus Jānu ķēniņam. The religious people were worried about losing their position. Un rakstmācītāji raizējās, ka viņi varētu zaudēt savas pozīcijas. And the political people were worried about losing their position. Un politiski atkal cilvēki domāja, ka viņi savas pozīcijas zaudēs. Because Jesus is both priest and king. Jo Jēzus ir gan priesteris, gan ķēniņš. They thought that they can trap them. Un viņi domā, ka nu viņi viņi tie, uh, notvēruši slavnā. There's no way he can get out of this one. Un tagad nebūs uh, tev ceļa ārā no šī slazna. But how many of us have learned that we cannot trap Jesus? Bet cik daudz no jums zina, ka mēs nevaram uh, tā kā ģīķert Jēzus slazdā? We can't trick the Lord. Mēs nevaram viņu apmuļķot. How can we trick the Lord who sees, who made heaven and earth? Kā mēs varam apmuļķot uh, debes un zemes radītāju? and who searches the hearts. Un kurš izmeklē sirdis. In fact, even David said in Psalm 139. Un Dāvids ir teicis uh, 139. psalmā. Lord, before even I utter a word, you already know it. Kungs, pirms es izsaku vārdu, tu jau zini, ko es teikšu. So, what makes them think that they, they can trap Jesus when he already knows what they're doing? Kā viņi var pieķert Jēzu vai ierunāt viņu slazdā, ja, ja viņš jau zina iepriekš, ko tie cilvēki domā un taisās darīt? In verse 16, un 16 pāns, it says, when they handed the coin to him, he asked, whose picture and title are stamped on it? Well, kad, Caesar, they replied. Kad, uh, viņ, un tad viņš tiem saka, kā attēls ir šis un, un uzraksts, bet tie viņam sacīja ķeizara. Now on the coin that they showed Jesus was the head of Tiberius Caesar. Un uz uz tās monētiņas, ko viņi atnes Jēzum, tur bija Tiberijas Cēzara galva. He was the reigning emperor of the empire of Rome. Viņš bija tas valdošais imperators Romas impērijā. And around his head was written the title. Un virs viņa galvas bija uzrakstīts tāds uzraksts. Tiberius Caesar, the divine Augustus. Tiberijas Cēzars, Dievišķais Augusts. And on the back of the coin, un otrā pusē monētai, was declaring that Caesar was the high priest of the Roman Empire. Tur bija rakstīts, ka uh, šis Cēzars ir uh, Romas impērijas augstais priesters. Remember, Rome saw Caesars as a god. Un atceraties, ka Roma uzskatīja Cēzaru kā Dievu. So Jesus is showing the coin that the Jewish people would use to pay for things. Essentially, Jesus is saying, you recognize Caesar's civil authority when you use his coins, therefore you're obligated to pay 
him the taxes he asked for. Un būtībā Jēzus teica, jūs redzat, šeit ir šī te Cēzara autoritāte uz tās monētiņas, un jūs to izmantojat, lai norēķinātos un lai maksāt arī nodokļus. You know, I was wondering what Jesus was thinking as he's holding that coin. Un es tā iedomājos, kodies Jēzus domāja, tad ir līdzīgi, ka viņš turēja to monētiņu. Knowing that it would be the government of Caesar who would soon pierce his hands and nail and crucify him. Un viņš atzinājas, ka tā būs tā Cēzara valdība, kas sitīs viņu krustā. And yet he would still say, pay your taxes to the Roman government. Un viņš vai nauda teica, maksājiet nodokļus Romiešu valdībai. Verse 17. Un 17. pants. Well then, Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. Un Jēzus tiem sacīja, tad dodīt ķēzaram, kas ķēzaram pieder, un dievam, kas dievam pieder, un tie izbrīnījās par viņu. I could just see the religious leaders and the supporters of Herod's face. Es arī nevāties, kāds bija viņu sejas? We didn't think of that answer. Mēs nekad nebūtu iedomājušies, kas varētu būt šāda atbilde. You and I can never stump the Lord. Mēs nekad nevaram apmuļķot Dievu. And you know what? There are times the Lord might give an answer we aren't even prepared for or even thought about. Bieži vien var būt tāda atbilde, ko mēs nekad nevarētu pat iedomāties vai nevarētu sagatavoties. You might be praying for something. Varbūt, ka tu par kaut ko lūdzi. And you might think, well, the Lord might answer it this way or the Lord might answer it that way. Un tu varbūt domā, ka Dievs man atbildēs tādā veidā vai šādā veidā. But instead the Lord answer it this way. Bet tā veidā tas kungs atbild visam savādāk. We cannot put the Lord in a box. Mēs nevaram ielikt to kungu kastē. They thought they got the Lord in this little box. He's going to say this or he's going to say that. Viņi domā, ka viņi ierēja ielikuši ēdu tādā kastē, un ka viņš teiks vai ne tā, vai ne tā. But instead, he did this. Bet viņš pateiks visam savādāk. Same with our walks with the Lord. Un tāpat arī ar mums. We sometimes try to figure the Lord, he might do it this way, he might do it that way. Un mēs dažreiz domājam, ka tas kungs varbūt darījis tādā veidā vai citādā veidā. Instead, he might do it a whole different way we didn't think about. Un bet tā vietā tas kungs dara pavisam savādāk, nekā mēs varētu iedomāties. And I'm sure the leaders weren't prepared for that answer, because it says they were completely amazed at him. Un es domāju, ka viņi nebija sagatavojušies tādai atbildēm, viņi bija ļoti, ļoti izdarījumi par to visu. You know, I know this year for Latvia we're voting for a president. Šajā gadā Latvijā mēs balsosim par prezidentu. Next year America will vote for a president. Un nākamā gadā Amerikā. And I know half the time like, oh God, help us, you know. Un tā brīžiem liekas atprast, Dievu palīdz mums. Because for me, in America, I don't like what's going on. Jo man ļoti nepatīk tās, kas notiek Amerikā. That's why I'm glad I'm here instead. Tāpēc tā vietā es esmu precīzi, ka es esmu šeit. You know, if we take advantage of the government that, you know, that helps us, Un, un, ja mēs slikti izturamies par, pret uh, valdību, kas palīdz mums. We are obligated to submit to the government as long as it does not infringe on our service to God. Uh, mēs, uh, mēs esam tā kā spiesti uh, pakļauties valdībai, bet, uh, nu, jāskatās, vai viņi mums uh, neapslāpē, vai, nu, tā kā neaizveidz mums kaut ko dievam. Simply said, Jesus pretty much told us to pay our taxes. Un, kā Jēzus teica, vienkārši maksājiet nodokļus. And in fact, the Apostle Peter repeated the same, Peter, the Apostle Paul repeated the same idea. Un apstols Pāvils turpināja šo pašu ideju. In Romans 13, verse 6 and 7. Romiešiem 13, 6. un 7. pantā. Paul says, pay your taxes too, for the same reason. For the government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them, pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them, and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Tāpēc maksājiet, maksājiet arī savus nodevus. Viņi, kas uz to raugās, ir Dievu kalpi. Dodiet katram, kas viņam pienāks. Nodevus, kam nākas nodevus, muitu, kam nākas muita, bīvu, kam nākas bīva, cieņu, kam nākas cieņu. 
you know, our taxes help pay the roads, which I'm sure they need to do a better job. <laughs> they also help pay our teachers, which we have a lot of teachers in here. And let's pray that they do get a raise because they definitely deserve it. Amen, yeah. <laughs> Amen, that's right. Now, when Paul wrote this, understand that Nero Caesar was in power. Nero. Nero. And he was an enemy towards Christians. He was. But on Vinch Big Christian Shinad next. He was persecuting and killing Christians. Vinch Vayaya on Galina most uh Christians. And yet Paul is saying we need to pay the government and respect those in power. On Paul Saka on Sirvia respect I Valdib on Yamaksa Nodovi. That's why it's important for us to be praying for those who are over us. On the bet you sorry, come as loads and valdi, colloads and that PM Chris Bad. I personally don't care for the person right now in Washington. But it is my obligation as a Christian to pray for him. Because God reminds us in his word, he puts people in power, he takes people out of power. And God has a way of changing the hearts of men and women who are over us. So it's important that we continue to pray for those over us because they're making decisions that will affect our lives. Un tas ir ļoti svarīgi, ka mēs lūdzam par tiem, kas stāv pāri pār mums, jo viņi pieņem lēmums, kas ietmetmēs pēc tam mūsu dzīves. You know, being that I live in Saldus County, tad, kad dzīvoju Saldu, Saldu, Novad, Saldu, no, Novad, 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 I kind of hear what goes on in the municipality. Es tā, nu, dzirdu, kas notiek Saldus domē. And I'll tell you, I would never want to be the mayor of Salvas. <laughs> All the decisions that must be made. How do we pay for this? How do we pay for that? You know? They need our prayers. For wisdom. So just as it's important to give to Caesar, we must also give to God what belongs to God. The coin that belonged to Caesar had his image stamped on it. And we should give ourselves to God because his image is stamped on us. That means we belong to God. Not to Caesar. Or the government. Not even ourselves. In closing. The last verse in 17 it says, His reply completely amazed them. Un 17. panta beigās uh, ir teikts, un tie izbrīnījās par viņu. They were amazed by his answer. Un viņi bija ļoti izbrīnīti par šo viņa atbildi. But that didn't change them. Bet tas viņus nemainīja. In fact, later they would twist his words. Un vēlāk viņi pārgrieza šos viņu vārdus. Into a lying accusation against him. Uh, par tādiem meliem, kas bija pret viņu. In Luke chapter 23 verse 2. Un Lūkas 23. nodeļā, otrajā pantā, they would accuse Jesus of forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, when he actually just did the opposite. Uh, un viņi iesāka, viņi apsūdzēt, sacīdami, mēs atrodam, ka šis mūsu tautu mulsina un, un aizliec dot ķeizeram nodokļus. You know, sometimes it doesn't matter how good an answer we give people, 
Un dažreiz nav svarīgi, cik labu atbildi mēs dodam cilvēkiem. Because some people will still twist our words. Jo tie cilvēki tās atbildes kaut kā pārgroza. And they did this to Jesus many, many times. Un tas notika arī ar Jēzu daudzas reizes. Yet God's truth will prevail. Bet Dievu taisnība vienalga uzvarēs un dominēs. And in the answer that Jesus gave the leaders, un tā atbildi, ko Jēzus pateica rakstu mācītājiem, God was glorified. Dievs tiks paukt. Dievs bija paaugstināts. Caesar was satisfied. Caesars bija apmierināts. The people were edified. Cilvēki tika audzināti. And his critics were stumpified. Un viņa kritizētāji tika apmulsināti. Let's pray. Lūksim. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word that is living and active. And Lord, we thank you that we have your image stamped on us. May we give ourselves wholeheartedly to you. And may we remember that people are watching us. They really want to know if we really are following you. Un viņas grib zināt, vai mēs patiešām tev sakojam. So I ask that you would give us an opportunity to share you with others. Un es lūdzu, lai tu mums dod iespēju dalīties ar tevi ar citiem. And Lord, I just ask you to bless my brothers and sisters here in this room. Un es lūdzu, lai tu sveitīm manas brājas un māsas šeit šajā telpā. Give them a great week. Un dod viņiem ļoti labu nedēļu. We ask this in Jesus' name. Mēs lūdzam to Jēzus vārdā. Amen. Amen. Please stand to receive the blessing. And then we'll have a closing song. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. Give you his favor. And bless you with his peace. We ask this in the name of the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.